Julius Garibaldi Melchers, otherwise known as Gary Melchers, was born in Detroit, Michigan on August the 11th, 1860, to a family of those interested in the arts. His father, Julius Melchers, was a known German-born American sculptor who was a source of inspiration in Gary's early life. He received his first instruction from his father, Julius, who was a stern and exacting master of the old school arts, and it is reasonable to assume that some of Gary's own methods were acquired through him. After receiving an education in Germany, Melchers went on to expand his artistic knowledge at the École des Beaux-Arts and the Academy Julian of Paris in 1881, studying under Jules Lebevre and Gustave Boulanger during his time in Paris, he received little direction in terms of technique due to his extensive prior knowledge and training in art, but his experiences would impact his development as a leader of the American School of Painters in Paris. While a student, Melchers adapted his style to those of French naturalist painters, led by Jules Bastien Lepage. Lepage painted unidealized views of contemporary country life. His pictures were painted in open air light and combined vigorous brushwork and brilliant color with an eye for place and personality. In 1884, Gary Melchers and George Hitchcock moved to Holland and founded an art colony while simultaneously garnering reputations as chroniclers of Dutch peasant life due to the roles they had taken on, inspired by a group of Dutch artists known as the Hague School Painters. Melchers began gathering attention with his paintings, The Sermon, which characterized the current working class and was a beloved example of rustic naturalism. It was then in the 1890s that Melchers began to produce some of his best portrait works, working for subjects with names like Vanderbilt, Mellon, and the Roosevelt, boosting his reputation and credibility as an artist. It is believed that in this time period, somewhere between 1890 and 1900s, he produced an art piece that is not known to many but holds a great historical story, Winter. The painting Winter portrays two young skaters believed to be Dutch subjects from his time spent in the remote Dutch fishing village of Egmond. During his time in Egmond, he co-founded a school of art that attracted American artists who were studying in Paris. Melchers and his students were drawn to the picturesque subject matter of fisher folks in this region. Students usually came to Egmond during the summer, but Melchers continued his work there during the winter months, stemming the source of inspiration for the oil and pastel painting on canvas known as Winter. Although Winter was not a story depicting historic hardships like many other paintings of its time, it holds the story of the lack of respect for art that once was very real in the world to the current reparations being made for this shameful time period. Winter was sold at the Great Berlin Art Exhibition in 1890 before Melcher's death in 1932. Rudolf Mose, a German-Jewish publisher known for his newspaper that was regularly critical of the Nazi party, acquired the work of art. The painting remained in Mose's possession until the Nazis rose to power and the world of art was completely turned around. The Nazis facilitated one of history's biggest art thefts. Initially, Jewish dealers were forced to sell their collections at low prices before fleeing abroad. Later, Jewish-owned collections were systematically confiscated. Other pieces were looted after their owners were deported to concentration camps. Paintings that were deemed modern or subversive were snatched from museums and exhibited as degenerate art, while other pieces were burned or destroyed. Mose died in 1920 and left the work of art to his descendants who remained in Germany. When the Reich began increasingly persecuting Jewish business owners and members of the press, Mose's descendants were forced to leave Germany in 1933 and surrender their art collection along with other possessions to the state. Throughout the early 20th century, the Melchers painting, which was among the seized possessions, continued to reappear in auctions, one of which was organized by a Nazi collaborator named Karl Harberstock of the Rudolf Lepp Auction House. 
After appearing in dozens of auctions, Winter was bought by Barlett Arkell in May 1934 from the Macbeth Art Gallery in New York City after it was originally purchased from an anonymous buyer and remained in that very museum for five months after being taken back from Nazi control. Arkell was an American industrialist who served as president of the Beech Nut Packing Company and was also the founder of the Arkell Museum in upstate New York, in which the painting sat until September of this year, when it was confiscated by the FBI. After learning of the unfortunate past of the Mosé's art collection, Mosé's heirs created the Mosé Art Restitution Project in 2012 to try to recover his vast art collection. In 2017, they received funding from the German government for the Mosé Art Research Initiative, also known as MARI, to trace missing works. The Melcher's painting of skaters was one of the eight MARI projects traced in its first year. A researcher spotted it on Facebook when the museum posted it before Christmas. An initial approach by the Mose Art Restitution Project was not successful in engaging the museum regarding our claim, says Roger Strauss. Mose's step great grandson. The intervention by the FBI and district attorney was impressive and effective, he says. The painting is still in the possession of the FBI in Albany, New York. Susan D. Friedlander, the Arkell Museum's executive director and chief curator, told the Times Union that the institution was, of course, very upset to learn the history of the painting seizure from the Mose family by the Nazis in 1933 and its subsequent sale at the Lepke auction in 1934. She went on record to say the institution willingly forfeited the work. We fully support the work of the Mose Art Research Initiative and other efforts and willingly turned over the paintings to the FBI, waiving all right, title, and interest in the painting. Although Winter may not be known as one of the greatest works of all time, the precedence and historical impact that finding the artwork and returning it has had on the art world is one that will be known for the remainder of time. The circumstances surrounding the seizing of the painting and the effort put in by the family to take back what is rightfully theirs shows that lost artwork can find its way back to its rightful owners and that anyone in the world of art should make a conscious effort to be more aware of the historical background of paintings that they acquire. Art should continue to be returned to the rightful owners of the piece as a sign of respect and acknowledgement of growth and progression made within the art world.